Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome to the web application penetration testing series. All right, so in this video, we're gonna get started with spidering, more specifically spidering uh, with Burp Suite. And uh, you know, the purpose of this video or this tutorial is to help you understand the spidering process and uh, how to go about doing it with a Burp Suite. All right, so there's gonna be a little bit of theory here, but I'll be explaining a lot of things. So again, this video is really focused on understanding spidering. Now, before we get started with that, uh, I just wanted to let you know that the target or our web application that we're going to be targeting um, or we're going to be attacking is the damn vulnerable web application. Now, if you don't know what the damn vulnerable web application is, that's fine. You can just Google it and I'll probably make a video on how to get it installed on Kali Linux. But what I would recommend if you're a you know, beginner or even if you're a professional in hacking, probably one of the best things that you need to have, uh, you know, in your kit is Metasploitable 2, all right? And for the simple reason that it contains, uh, first of and foremost, a vulnerable operating system, and secondly, it contains all the vulnerable web applications that we will be using at one stage uh, during this series. Okay, so we're gonna be starting off with the damn vulnerable web application. As I said, it comes pre-installed with Metasploitable 2, so all you need to do is get the local IP address on your Metasploitable 2 virtual machine, which in my case is 192.168.1.102. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my browser and I'm just gonna open up that web, uh, that IP address, 0.1.102, and uh, just give it a few seconds to load up. As you can see, there we are, that's Metasploitable 2. And uh, it's going to prompt us to select what vulnerable web app we want to use. In this case, we're going to select the DVWA, which is the damn vulnerable web application. So just click on that. And now it's going to ask you for your admin and password. Uh, in this case, uh, for your username and password, sorry about that. In this case, the username is admin and the password is uh, password. All right, so just hit login and it's going to log you into the uh, damn vulnerable web application. Now we'll be looking at this uh, at a more uh, in, in at a later video. And the reason is we have to go through all of these options. But for now, if you go to the um, if I can just remember where it was, if I can just go to the security, so to the damn vulnerable web application security at the moment, it was high because I was actually uh, performing some tests on it. But just change it to medium or low. But for now, you won't be using it. I was just letting you know what web application we're going to be using. All right. That being said, let's move on to Burp Suite. All right. And uh, we can I can start explaining the spidering process. All right. So let me just open up Burp Suite. So I've updated it to the latest version. I think I'm running Kali Linux now. In the previous video, I was running Parrot. Uh, so I think there should be an update, but uh, I could be wrong. So let's just give that a few seconds to start up. Yeah, there is an update, so I'll do that later. And we'll just click on create our temporary project and use the burp defaults and start burp. Okay, so whilst that's starting, let me explain what spidering is. All right, now the purpose of spidering is to identify our scope, all right, or what uh, what we want to scan. Now, this is not exactly scanning, and we'll be looking at scanning, but essentially, spidering is the process of mapping out our web application and is very, very useful for finding uh, links and, uh, and web forms, uh, which is also very important because it will allow us to then furthermore uh, attack the web forms, manipulate headers, etc., etc. All right, now when you talk about automatic spidering with Burp Suite, it's essentially when uh, when Burp is spidering, it follows uh, links and uh, it'll, it'll it'll start following links and it will start uh, identifying full files, folders, and forms from the web application. And it'll uh, the the great thing about this is it will record all the requests and responses while it's performing the the whole spidering process. Okay, so uh, once you have a Burp Suite opened up here, you can let me just expand it so we have a greater picture of what's going on exactly. Sorry if my virtual machine is a little bit slow. I need to configure it correctly. Anyway, what you want to do is we've looked at the proxy check section. Let's look at the spider section. And in here, uh, this is a very, very simple menu. And to understand it, you can see that we have two tabs available. We have the control tab and we have the options tab. All right. The control tab, uh, essentially, if I just click, if I just look, if we look at it, as you can see, these settings are used to monitor and control the web spider. So it allows you to stop, uh, to start and stop the burp spidering, uh, and you can also clear the queues. All right. When you look at the options, which is right here, sorry about that. When you look at the options, there are a lot of options. We'll be looking at them uh, in, we'll be looking at them in a second. Sorry about that. Uh, I actually got an email. Apologies there. Um, let's get started now with the control section. So, uh, the control section, it allows, we, we are able to control the spider status where we can stop it 
and start it and uh, you know furthermore we can uh, clear the queues that already exist there all right um we then have the spider scope where we can uh, we can define our own uh, scope uh, and depending on what we want to spider we'll look at that in a few seconds uh, and finally if we look at the uh, well if we look in the options section here we have the crawler settings which allow us to specify uh, the way the spider is going to crawl for the web content on the web application. We'll be looking at the maximum link depth and what that means, passive spidering, that allows us to essentially spider, to con continue spidering when we are looking through uh, or we're going through the web application or we're performing uh, requests and responses uh, when we're performing requests. As for the form submission, this is probably something that we'll be looking at in the next video and we'll be doing this uh, practically where we'll be actually performing the uh, we'll be performing the spidering process uh, but for now let me see what else yes the request headers uh, the request headers are used to uh, you can manipulate essentially the headers uh, if you've learned about HTTP headers by the way I really want to cover HTTP because it's very important that you understand how the headers work but we'll be looking at this all in advance but now let's start off with the spider status uh, well not really with the spider status but looking at the control tab uh, if you look at the spider scope you can see that you can it'll use the default suite scope which is defined in the target tab if you just click on use a custom scope you can see that okay first uh, you uh, for, if you just click on this little cog here you can restore the defaults you can load your own and you can save the options so that's just uh, to do with that now when you talk about using the advanced scope here is where you can uh, essentially um, this is where you specify what you want to uh, map. So you can specify a host, uh, the port, etc., etc. Okay, again, we'll be looking at all of this as we move along. But for now, we're just going to use the default suite scope. Um, we can just, uh, if once you click on that, it's going to start the, the spidering process, but we don't need it right now. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to pause it. And if we mo move on to the options now, the options tab has a lot of stuff that we need to look into. First and foremost, we have the, cr the crawler settings, all right? So uh, when we're talking about the basic options, so for example, we can specify what uh, the spider will crawl for. Uh, so it, it, you can choose to select for robots, the robots.txt file, which is very important because it shows you, uh, you know, exclusions. You then uh, can detect, you can ignore the links to non-text uh, content. Uh, you can request the root of all directories, very important stuff. But again, you can customize this to your liking. Now, one of the things I would recommend that you do not touch with if you do not know what you're doing yet is the maximum link depth. All right, the maximum link depth is essentially uh, the number of links you want the spider to uh, to essentially uh, to crawl or to, to map. Now, by default, five is uh, in my in my in my situation or in my case. Uh, what I like doing is alternating between three to five. Anything higher than that uh, will usually overload uh, the web application and it will cause it to lag or to respond very very slowly. And uh, you know, again, th that might not mean a lot right now, but trust me, when you'll actually be performing the penetration test on the web application, you really need a, a good response. Uh, otherwise, you you have your time to live, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so let's look at what passive spidering is, all right? So passive spidering, as I said, is essentially just, uh, it allows you to continue scanning, uh, you know, or going through uh, or actually performing your requests as uh, as it, um, it, it essentially allows you to continue the spidering process as you're performing any other tasks. So as you can see, passive spidering monitors, um, monitors traffic through the burp proxy to update the sitemap without making any new requests, all right? So passively spied as you browse. You can also select the link depth associated with proxy requests. Now this, I would recommend keeping it at zero to two. And that's because again, you do not want a very, very deep uh, link depth in the sense that you're also going to be performing your own uh, requests and you'll be doing many other things. You could be uh, looking at the decoder or you could be looking at, you know, could be focusing on the target and you don't want it again to, uh, to slow down the web application. All right, so form submission, again, this is something that I said we'll be talking about in the, in the next video because it is quite advanced uh, and we'll get started with the damn vulnerable web application there. Uh, moving on to the spider engine, we'll be looking at application login as well, but for now, uh, just uh, we will just skip over that. When we talk about the spider engine, all right, these uh, settings uh, control the engine used for making HTTP uh, requests when spidering. All right, so this allows you to change the number of threads you want to use and as I said, uh, using more than, um, we can see right now it's at 10, 
what I would recommend is still keeping it within the range of uh, two to five, uh, or you might uh, you might cause the web application to slow down. And these are uh, more advanced settings that you can use uh, dependent on timing. All right, and we've talked about the request headers. They allow you to modify the way the spider will uh, will look uh, towards the web application. So, for example, you could you could edit uh, the the uh, the device that is being used, and you could change it, for example, into a mobile device, and you get the idea. You are you essentially allows you to to change the request headers, um, and uh, from that, obviously, you'll get a response back. Uh, dependent on what you changed. All right, so that was the spidering, uh, or actually the theory uh, revolving around spidering. Now, uh, we'll be looking at how spidering really works in the next video. Uh, I know some of you may not like this, that I actually went through th theory and I haven't uh, talked about doing anything. But remember, it's very, very important to understand what exactly is happening behind spidering. And in the next video, we'll actually get started with the spidering process. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or you found value in it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions, you can hit me up in the comment section. You can hit me up on my social networks on and on my site. If you have any video suggestions, you can leave them on the website as well. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.